Hello, I am Connie Colosi, Director of Media Text and Digital Learning for Pinellas County Schools. And with me today is Kevin Hogerbrook. Welcome, Kevin. Hello. Kevin works with me in the department, um, and he is a Technology Integration Coordinator. Today, we are going to visit Curlew Creek Elementary. Kevin, what are we going to see there? Hi, Dr. Colosi. So we had the opportunity, um, with the permission of Curlew Creek and their wonderful teachers, to actually come out and get some smart board interaction to see what it looks like in the classroom with our students. And as you will see, Laura, which is, is a technology integration coordinator with me, is actually demonstrating some of the features and some of the interaction with a smart board. So we're going to see a little bit of what uh, Laura does with a smart board. All right. We were invited into Michelle Zajac's classroom. She's a third grade teacher at Curlew Creek Elementary. And we took her lesson that she had planned for that day and just adapted it to the smart board. So the first thing that we started with was obviously the objectives and the scale, the Marzano scale that the kids were working on. Um, and it was about line plots and data on graphing, making a bar graph. So that's what we started with, with the objective, what their I can statement would be for, for that segment of the lesson. And then I showed them the scale. So here we go. Answering questions about data help you better understand the information because the bar graph is there trying to give us information. It's not just pretty bars on a paper, right? It's trying to tell us something about the number of votes and the topic. So, and what is this then? This was the, Asia. It, it's the title of the bar graph. The title of the bar graph, the information we're trying to get. So how many more votes did computers, computers receive, receive than space. space? All right, so the first thing I have to do is look at the computers. And I always told my kids to just go ahead and figure out how many people voted for computers. How many people? Ten. Ten. How do you know that, Caleb? Um, because... It's counting by twos, which is two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten. And the orange bar graph of computers ends at, at, ends at ten. Ends at ten. So that's how many they voted for ten. And how many voted for space? Kira? Um, um, they voted for... Is it four? No, it's three because <gasps> it's like right in the middle. It's in the middle. So it's not all the way to the four, but it's not the two. It's in the middle. And what's in the middle of two and four? Three. three. So why don't you draw a line right at three. Take your, just use your pen and so there you go. Okay, so now we have our numbers. And I always do this first so that we don't make a mistake when we're adding and subtracting. Thank you. We have our numbers up there rather than just counting spaces. Do we need to do books and health for this problem? No. No. So what number sentence can I use to figure out how many more votes did computers receive then space? What number sentence? Mallory. Uh, ten. Ten? Minus three. Minus three equals? equals seven. Move over, Moby. Equals seven. Ten minus three equals seven. So is that, are we done now? No. What we do we do next? What's, what, we, what did we not do yet, Ben? Um, you need to write, like, Seven more people voted for computers. Seven more people voted for computers. Because now, I'm going to read my answer. Seven more people voted for computers than space. Should we add that? Yeah. To make sure we're completely answering. Yep, I'm going to erase my period. Computers than space. In this segment, we literally took snips from the Go Math lesson and I put them into the smart notebook. And I did the guided piece with the instruction right from Go Math, showed them two ways to solve um, the problems. But my end goal was to get them to ask questions about the graph and be able to understand the information that the graph was trying to give them. Um, so we move from the three on that scale to the four. I created a little bar graph for them to actually do, to actually come up to the board and be interactive with the smart board and then be able to create the graph. And then I sort of guide them to ask questions about the graph so that they can figure out what that graph is trying to tell them. Here we have sort of, I'm going to move my bar up out of the way, sort of a, an empty bar graph that we're going to make and then we're going to ask our, ourselves some questions about it. Okay. Because now that you guys can answer those questions, the next step 
to move to the threes is to be able to ask the questions. So I have a laptop, a desktop computer. What's the difference between a laptop and a desktop? Do you guys know? A different, a laptop, you could like bring it everywhere you want. And right. a desk computer has to just stay where it has is. Has to stay at the desk. So, and who knows what a Surface Pro is? Oh, we got some Microsoft people in here. Uh-huh. Who knows what an iPad is? <laughs> Everybody's hand should be up. And I don't, you don't know what that is, though, yes. do you? Yes. Oh, oh, you do know what a PlayStation is? Yes. yes. All right, just making sure. So you get to go pick your favorite kind of technology. And then we're going to have to decide how we count them, okay, what, how we number them. Caleb said the other graph was by twos. We're going to decide if by twos is efficient, or maybe we go by fives, maybe we go by ones. We'll see. Well, we're going to do that after. All right, so each person, one at a time, is going to come up, take a square. We're going to make the bar graph. My favorite kind of technology is an iPad. So I'm going to put it right on top of the iPad, OK? So who's going to go first? You've been sitting very quietly. Why don't you go first? All right, next person, why don't you go, Gail? Okay, go. We're going to go right down the row this time. Just make it quick. Looks like we've got a pretty good bar graph here. What do you think? In this piece of the lesson, which is actually the most important piece for me, I had the kids created the graph. They were now looking at the graph, and I was trying to pull questions from them, trying to get them to glean some information from that graph, asking them to compare and contrast, and then eventually you know, set them up to go and write questions about the graph and then be able to answer questions about the graph. All right, so what's the first thing that we should do? We, what, what did we do? We, we have our title, Favorite Technology, but what is it telling us? Miss Ajax's class likes what, Ben? Likes the iPads the most. iPads the most. Are we finished making our bar graph? What else do we need to do? We also need to maybe add Miss Ajax. Oh, Miss Ajax needs to add hers. <laughs> Miss Ajax likes iPads too. Okay. All right. I already picked one. I already picked iPads. So I did mine. All right. So we remember how I showed you we, I like to add the numbers now? I need a volunteer. Kira, come and put a number on top of the laptop so that when we're doing our math problems, we have numbers rather than just green squares to work with. So right at the top of it, go ahead and write the number of that. Four. Good. Asia, why don't you do desktop computers? Since you guys are down front right here. Ben, come and do surface. Is there three there, though? Oh, oops. Oh, oh. Bless you. All right, let's double check. Make sure before we do our math problems, make sure we counted right, because if we start doing our math problems with a number that's incorrect, what's going to happen to our answers? They're going to be wrong. So one, two, three, four, check. One, two, one, two, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, check. One, two, three, check. All right. The last piece of the lesson was really an extension of the goals, actually. I just had them look at the way the data was displayed. I wanted them to decide what was the best way to show their information. So they had to count the votes and see, were they odd, were they even, what should we use, by, go up by twos, should we label it by fours, how was the best way to label that graph. So they had all kinds of ideas for that. So now, how should I label this side? What should I do? What would be the best way to do it? Ideas. Ben? Uh, hmm? You lost your thought? Well, hang on to it. Try to get it back and tell me in a minute. You should put numbers on the side so you Numbers on the side, definitely. So the number of votes, I should write that over here. OK. Number of votes. But now, what else? Kira? You need to um, make the numbers. What numbers now? What numbers should I make, Madison? Um, 1 through 10. 1 through 10? Why did you say that? Um, because the highest is 7, so I thought 10 would be a good number. All right, should I start at 0 or 1? 
Zero. Ah, always start at zero down here. Should I go, how should I go in what increment? Because Caleb said it was going by twos in the other chart. Mallory? Uh, two. Go by twos? No. no. Yes. Yeah. Who votes for twos? Hands up. Who votes for not twos? All right, why not? Why not twos? Because on the three, only, well, you could still do it, but. You, how could you do it? You could just put a half. You could put a half. And what other one would need a half? Seven. The seven. All right, so I have three categories that would go by twos and two that don't. So does it really matter? If they were all even numbers and all went by twos, I would definitely go by twos. But now that we have some odd numbers, seven and three, we don't have to go by twos because they can go in the middle. You guys already know that, right? So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. If I had more room, I'd make it a little bit neater. So are we done? No. No. What else? So once they had all the information that they needed about that lesson and knew their objectives, I sent them back to do a guided piece first. It was just a few um, one, two, three questions that we would go around and check and make sure they got them right. And then they would get sent on to their independent work because it's good to talk and do it all, you know, do a guided reading or guided um, instruction in front of them. But in testing time, they actually have to be there reading the words and, and processing it on their own at their desk. So that just tied the lesson back to paper pencil, and they were done. What question could we ask? How many there is in all? How many votes there were in all? How many votes in all? Good, Madison. How many children got surveyed? How many children got surveyed? What about the difference between some, maybe? Ben? Mrs. Ajax, Mrs. Ajax's class likes iPads the most. iPads the most. And, or you could say, how much more does Mrs. Ajax's class like iPads? Finish my sentence. Than, Josh? Than, than, um. Computers. Than computers. So how many, how many more students like iPads than computers? What's another question I could ask using two columns? Using two columns. Who is not giving me a... Brody, make up a question. Um, how many votes there were in Surface and Laptops? Combined? Yeah. How many votes did Surface and Laptops get combined? Good. Good answer. Or you say Miss like, um, Service Pro. Miss Ajax class liked the PlayStation by one more vote than Surface, Surface Pros. Good. All right. One more, Ben. Last chance. Um. Well, you should put the thing, the um, type of type of technology down really I didn't technology. label the bottom row. You're, you're right. I should label the bottom row. It, underneath here. Should I write it on the board down? No. no. It won't fit. So I'll just put type of technology. Good catch. Good catch. Okay. I thought maybe the, the wording down there would be okay, but we can definitely add the bar there too. Here the kids have gone back to their desks. They have their Go Math books open to the right lesson, um, and they're working on the three share and show questions that I assigned them from the smart board. Um, this, the questions are basically a summary of everything that I taught, and I can go around and just make sure they do just those three, and then we're checking them to be sure they understood the lesson, make sure they're understanding what we want them to. Um, it's a chance to reteach something if we need to, and it's a chance for the kids to show us what they know before they go on to the more challenging independent pieces. Um, you'll notice there's a lot of people in the room. We had a group with us that were there to present the lesson and, and film it, and we're all teachers, so the minute the kids were working on their own, we all sort of jumped in and were helping, and, or not helping, but helping them guide their thinking. So that's why you see all of us in the room there. It wasn't a planned event at all, but there we are. And um, of course, Michelle Zajac is the teacher, so she was around doing her normal, wonderful thing she does with her um, assistant, Jamie Bunting, that's in there for one of the students for, that needed ESE support. Um, the last thing I mentioned, you'll see one of the students did a really good job explaining his thinking to me. 
I like to set up um, what I call office hours for them. So one of the students that maybe you know, struggled with a problem but ended up solving it on his own and explaining it well, that's a good um, teacher for the other kids. To let it, them hear him explain his way of thinking because sometimes kids learn better from each other than they do from us. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to actually talk with one of the teachers, Michelle Sajak, and her students um, at Crew Creek and learn more about what using the smart board means to them in their classes.